for the Global Gateways Office here at Ohio State. I want to thank you so much for joining us for our Career Conversations Buckeye Bridge event. During today's event, you will hear from Enrique Chamatini dos Santos, a former Ohio State intern who is the Brazil Corn Licensing Manager at Bayer Crop Science. He'll discuss the field of crop science in Brazil, as well as share his experiences in the Ohio program within the College of Food, Agricultural, and Environmental Sciences. With us today, we also have another individual from Bayer who will talk about the CARBON project. Um, during the conversation today, please feel free to submit any questions to the Q&A box and we will moderate the Q&A session following the presentations. Um, but before we get started, I just want to turn it over to Jane for a few minutes to talk a bit about the Brazil Gateway. Well, first of all, thank you so much, Caitlin, Aaron, and the team for putting this event together, for the speakers today, for your availability, and for everyone attending. I'm Jane, director at the Ohio State Brazil Gateway. We are located in Sao Paulo. I don't know if any of you have ever visited. Our office was established in 2014, following the China Gateway established in 2010 and the India Gateway in 2012. We focus on four key areas, and I would like to give you a very quick uh, overview of these areas, just in case you feel like we might help you or someone you know, and then you can reach out. So the four areas are students, alumni, research and partnerships. Um, in the student area, we help um, Ohio State students come to Brazil to be involved with Brazil through, I don't know, education abroad programs, um, internships, research, cultural activities, language programs, this type of thing. But we also have Brazilians interested in going to Ohio State for undergraduate, graduate programs, research, um, internships. For example, here today, we have two Brazilians who did the, the Ohio program internship. Um, that welcomes international students to um, farms and companies around the U.S. through this office, which is within Ohio State. Um, the alumni area, we try to keep the Buckeye family together here in Brazil through events and connections so they can help each other. There, we have a list of 1,300 uh, Brazilians who either got a degree from Ohio State or spent some time doing research or uh, an internship at Ohio State. Um, the third area is research, so we try to keep Ohio State connected with universities in Brazil and the faculty members that um, do research, can do research together, publish together, apply for grants. And then finally, the last area is partnerships. Uh, we try to connect Ohio State with not only universities, but also industry, nonprofits, and um, local government, so we can put together executive education programs, um, try to find internships for high state students, um, joint uh, sponsored research. And I think we have, um, I think we have around 17, 18 uh, agreements with the uh, uh, Brazilian institutions. Yeah. So, so you can see examples of everything I mentioned um, on our social media in the newsletter. That's a bi-monthly newsletter. And you can also reach out to us. I will share here um, with everyone the links and the email of our office. That's it. Hope you have a wonderful event. Thanks so much, Jane, um, for that great overview. I just want to briefly read Enrique's uh, bio real quickly before we get started. So he considers himself a citizen of the world. Born in 1991 in southern Brazil, he grew up in central Brazil when his parents moved to help his grandfather in the farmlands. In 1998, he went back to Southern Brazil where he spent the majority of his life. One year before finishing college, the desire to improve his English made him look for an opportunity abroad. That was when he found the Ohio program. And between March, 2013 and 2014, he lived this unique experience working nine months on a soy corn farm in Wilmington, Ohio, and the last three years taking classes at OSU. Back in Brazil, he majored in agronomy and started his career at Monsanto, which is now Bayer. Since then, he has lived in three different states in Brazil, working with corn seed sales. Currently, he works in the marketing division as the Brazil Corn Licensing Manager, dealing with germplasm and biotechnology licensing agreements and relationships with other companies. And this experience in the U.S. made a huge difference in his personal life and professional life. And he's 
glad to share such experience with you. So with that being said, I will turn it over to you. Good. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, Jane, and all the, the team for the opportunity to talk in here. Uh, first of all, I should apologize for my English. So <laughs> it's been a while. I don't have uh, contact with such long conversations. So if eventually you don't understand a, a word or, or some statement that I make, please feel free. Uh, well, as my bio uh, mentioned, I am Enrique. I am a guy from Southern Brazil, and I'm here today to talk about my experience on the Ohio State program, the top that I had the opportunity to take back in 2013, and how this experience, amazing experience, by the way, uh, helped me in my personal and, and, and professional life, and a little bit of what I am doing uh, nowadays, okay? So, uh, I actually have to thank two persons uh, by the by the guy who I became and by the opportunities that I had the opportunity to take. First of them is my father, because he made me to take lessons on the accordion, and that's when the music comes in my life. And I'm gonna share with you how this music and the accordion helped me. Uh, in my time in, in America. And the second ones are my uh, high school classmates. That's a very funny story because back in my high school, I didn't talk any English at all. So I don't know if you are familiar, but in Brazil, most of kids take English classes separately from the, the school. And by the time I didn't have enough money to take such classes. So all the English that I had came from the basic uh, scholarship learning. So it was very poor. So these guys made a lot of fun on me and making joking about my, my English. So uh, at that time, it, uh, it helped me to build a really strong will to learn English. And I was very decided by that time that at some point in my career or in my life, I would have uh, to learn English. And I wanted it so hard that after high school, already in my college, I start looking at some internship programs. Okay. By that time, we had a government program called uh, Science with No Borders, Ciencias Sem Fronteiras in Portuguese. Uh, which was totally free, uh, paid by government, but you had to take uh, approved proficiency test. Uh, and beyond being very expensive, because you had to pay it in dollars, it was really hard. And of course, my English skills didn't, wouldn't meet the, 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 the test. So I started uh, to look for other forms other ways of really going to america and spend some time in order to improve my english skills and that was when i found uh the top the ohio program and also it was through a guy from my city in southern brazil who used it to be intern in the program a long time ago his name is giovanni Faé. he's a researcher at embrapa nowadays uh and yeah so that that was when I, I i got to know the top so i took some interviews and i was accepted by by one farm uh never will forget the day i had to call the farmer really <laughs> it was not even a cell phone it was the the the, the house phone when i had to to call him with no video no whatsapp no cameras and talk to him, introduce myself. I was very nervous, but yeah, everything went well. So I landed in US the beginning of 2013, spent the first nine months in the farm growing soybean and corn. And in the last three months, I had the opportunity to take uh, some classes at the OSU, right? Basically what I can say to you, and I'm a very, encourages guy to everyone who asks me 
uh, if it is worth it to spend one one year in in the U.S. And the answer is for sure, hundred percent, yes. Uh, and I can give you a, a lot of examples, but beyond uh, my first goal was to introduce, in, improve my English skills, but I can guarantee you that was only one of the things that this internship gave me. Uh, I learned how to live alone, how to take care of myself. I improved my agricultural schools into the, the farm. Uh, from the cultural side, it was very nice i met wonderful people that is to have contact nowadays and also one thing that helped me on my on my english skills was the fact that the place where i lived uh there was no brazilian with me so i basically lived alone uh, that in the beginning i had a really hard time because you feel alone you wanted to talk in your native language you don't know how to practice your English very well. Uh, but as I mentioned before, uh, in this case, the music, the accordion played uh, a really uh, good role in this trajectory because one or two months after being in America, I had to, uh, to opportunity to join the church musicians in the community that I was living. So every Sunday, we use it to go to the church. And when I saw I was just part of the band, was singing and playing with these guys. Uh, and then it started to uh, enhance my social circle. Uh, I started playing frisbee and football with guys in, in town in Wilmington. So yeah, I, I made some friends that I carried to to my life uh, till nowadays. Uh, so this is the part of, of the farm that was really, really cool, very close to the family, well treated a lot. They took care of me as I, if I was uh, their son, for sure, if we, if we can put this. And well, uh, when I finished the, 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 my time in the farm, I had two choices. One of them is, well, I spent nine months in the farm. I still have three months uh, left in the visa, so I can just spend my time traveling. Had made a, 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 a considerable amount of money. Uh, or I could pay my classes and take a half semester at the OSU. And I took the second option. I, I thought at the time I can come back and travel and get to know US, uh, hopefully whenever I, 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 I want in the future, uh, but I cannot miss the opportunity of taking class in such a uh, considerable and respected university as the Ohio University, so the Ohio State University. So I moved to Columbus, uh, rent another house, at that time with two other Brazilian colleagues. And then we started taking the classes. And of course it was three months of fun, uh, making new friends again, uh, learning and get, getting to know a little closer the academic environment in the US. It was really good and very interesting to me. And 12 months later, one year later, uh, I, took off in US and landed back in Brazil. Uh, and then I started my career at Monsanto by the time. So I finished my college, took a, a internship and I had the opportunity to, to start my career as a sales rep. So uh, in the commercial area, I spent basically four and a half years. So the first opportunity, the first position was in southern Brazil, the state where I come from. The second position was in central Brazil. And then basic almost two and a half years ago, I had the opportunity to move to Sao Paulo in a corporative function, which is the function that I am uh, doing nowadays as a licensing sales manager. So I, 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 I almost finished in here, uh, guys, but if, if I could describe and summarize how this 
program and how this experience helped me. Uh, again, it is not only in the professional area, of course, looking from this perspective, uh, of course, the English skills help you even more when we are talking about a multinational company that opens a lot of doors and uh, helps. But the experience, the cultural experiences, the people that I met, the, the friends that I made and that I still carry today with me, the family that uh, took care of me, all of this changed my life. Uh, the, the Enrique that landed in the U.S. in March 2013 wasn't the same Enrique that came back to Brazil in March uh, 2014. So, yeah, I, I really encourage any, anyone who wants to take this opportunity. Every month, some guy from states from Brazil call me because they see some of my videos or my publications in social media asking me if they what I would recommend them to apply for the program. And my answer is always, yes, uh, you should, because it will make a, a huge difference in your life. So very simple here. Sorry about the time. Uh, I, I really usually get excited talking about this because <laughs> I lived so much this, the experience. Thank you so much, Enrique. That was a great overview of your experience. Um, Adriano, are you ready to go? Yeah. Perfect. So guys, it's a very huge pleasure to me to be here, uh, to share my experience here in, in the buyer company. Uh, in fact, I am I am colleague uh, of Enrique. It's a, uh, it's a friend of mine. We we lived during during some time right Enrique in the same city. Uh, we joined sometimes to to make some some parties right, and uh, I didn't know you you were here. It was was very good to to listen about your story, and. Guys, uh, today the intention here is to present a little bit about uh, the Carbon Venture, the, the, the team that, the, that I, I am part here in the company. I will try to share my screen. Please let me know, guys, if you are able to, to see my screen. Yep, we, we can, can see that. Yep. Perfect. Let me put in presentation mode. So first, first of all, um, I would like to, to say a little bit about, about me and about my career. So my name is Adriano Anselmi. I am a technical manager in Bayer Crop Science. Uh, I have seven years here in the company. I am an agronomist. I did a master degree in uh, agribusiness. After that, I, I received my, my PhD in um, uh, precision agriculture here in, in Sao Paulo State University. And during this, the, during my, my doctorate degree, I had the opportunity to, to stay for four or five months in Colorado State University, uh, uh, advised by Professor uh, Haj Kozla was a very, very good experience, experience there. I really encourage you guys to, to take uh, experience similar of, of uh, Enrique, of, of me, was a very, uh, very intensive uh, period there. Uh, and and, and uh, I have a very, a very good, uh, uh, Lembrances, uh, sorry for, for uh, memories. Memories there, right? Thank you very much. So, uh, a little bit about me. Uh, after my my PhD, I I started in, in legacy Monsanto. After that, Monsanto was bought by Bayer, and now I'm I'm Bayer and part of this Carbon Venture team. I would like to share with you about well let me let me say a little bit of the the 
agenda that I'm planning for for uh, next minutes. Um, I would like to to talk about the context uh, that we are uh, we are about about carbon carbon market. I I want to say a little bit about global buyer commitment. Uh, I will. Uh, go through a little bit of, about some challenges in the carbon market. And after that, I will, I will explain a little bit of carbon project in Brazil that we call Pro Carbono that we launched two years ago. And nowadays we have almost 2000 clients enrolled in this, in this program. So to, to start with the TAM, I will show you a very quick video. I will stop to share. I think I, I need to stop to share and uh, share again to, to share with no, you. I, I, I believe you see it. Important. Yeah, just, just play. Hit the play. Yep, if you just hit play, I think we should be able to see it. Can, can you hear? Um, can you hit play and, and see if, it, if that works? Yeah. Aperto to play para a gente ver. Yeah, no, no, I, I believe the, the audio is not enabled yet. I will stop and share with with sound now no we are just mm, seeing the no. screen but... we see the video it, you know we see the, the video it looks like um perhaps it opened on a different tab for you yeah i, I will i will start to share again Share sound, optimize for video. Uh, let's try again. Can you see my screen now? Mm -hmm. Sound. Yep, that's working. Oh. Yep, that's perfect. Mesmo composto. Resultados totalmente diferentes. A mesma técnica. Do extermínio à salvação. É tudo uma questão de uso, de equilíbrio. O carbono, por exemplo, um componente chave para toda a forma de vida na Terra, também é responsável por grandes estragos na atmosfera. E hoje, chegamos a um desequilíbrio climático insustentável. Será que tem como equilibrar essa equação? A agricultura tem um papel vital nesta transformação. E é aí que entra a nossa proposta. Queremos criar um ecossistema balanceado entre agentes emissores e produtores, que tenha confiança e transparência em sua raiz, um modelo que seja comprovadamente atraente do ponto de vista econômico e necessário para a sobrevivência do planeta. Um modelo que continue se apoiando em tecnologia e metodologia mas que traga novas práticas, novos olhares. Um modelo em que a sustentabilidade seja indispensável para melhores negociações. Dá para chegar nesse equilíbrio. Dá para fazer. Juntos. Very good. Hope you guys enjoyed, uh, have enjoyed the video. Uh, the audio was good. Yeah, yeah it, it was is. perfect. It was. Okay. So uh, as the video, the video said, and and we we already know, uh, climate change is one of the major enemies of agriculture, and we also know. Uh, the, the CO2 in the atmosphere is increasing a lot in the last last years, and the agriculture is very extremely impacted for for the for the climate change. We we can see a lot of extreme events as as flood, as uh, severe droughts, as uh, pests. Pests and disease pressure uh, 
agriculture, in fact, is, is, uh, is very, very uh, impacted, negatively impacted for the climate change. Uh, a lot of, uh, of research are saying that, and uh, we believe that uh, farmers and agriculture sector uh, even affect for 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 this this uh, these events sometimes can can also uh, contribute for 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 this uh, this climate change but we believe and a lot of research are saying that uh, agriculture sector is key to enable the global climate balance uh, it means uh, agriculture can help uh, can be the solution to 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 mitigate this climate change and how agriculture can do that basically uh, is counting with uh, with plants with uh, with the photosynthesis that plants can can do and and can uh, uh, get co2 from the atmosphere and put it into the soil so some research say that uh, uh, the potential of agriculture is is to mitigate 25% of greenhouse gas emissions uh, that that was uh, released uh, from the last 25 years. It means uh, have a huge uh, role in this climate uh, impact mitigation. And uh, the purpose of, uh, of uh, Carbon Venture, Venture team that I'm part uh, is to be an agent of change for a more sustainable, sustainable world, connecting farmers to the, to the carbon market to transform sustainability into a business. So with this purpose, or, or just uh, uh, taking a step behind, uh, when the story of the of of carbon venture uh, starts. Uh, I I would like to say that it the carbon venture starts when Bayer did a very a very huge commitment for for the investors, uh, saying that we want to be neutral carbon neutral by 20, uh, 2030. and some ways we can do that is is uh, being more efficient in our 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 process uh, in the manufacturer uh, side we can uh, uh, access uh, renewable uh, energy we can also offsetting emission through biodiversity enhancing carbon capture and we did more than that we uh, did a, a, another commitment uh, saying that we want to reduce 30% of greenhouse gas footprint of the most emitting crop system in the regions that buyers serve. And we, as a company, we have a, 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 lot, a huge knowledge and we have some technologies that can, in fact, help farmers to be more efficient in their in their activities, we can help them to 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 choose uh, high potential genetic. We can advise them to better use crop protection products. We can advise to use crop rotation, cover crop. Uh, we can uh, accelerate or increase uh, the adoption, leverage some 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 uh, digital tools, tailored solutions, all of that uh, we understand, we, we believe that can help farmers in the short term to be more efficient, efficient and as a consequence, they will get more carbon in the soil. So is, is, is the way that we believe that we can help farmers. And based on that, uh, we probably, uh, Doing that, these this, this commitments, a buyer decide to create carbon venture across the world. So we have uh, another ventures uh, focusing carbon in US, uh, in Brazil, uh, in, in Europe, in Asia. So it's a program, a global program of, of buyer. 
And uh, when we start to, to think in our purpose and put in the ground the project that we have in mind, we, we face it with some challenges. First, first of them is how to help farmers to, uh, to put more carbon in the soil how to, to help them, how to encourage them to, to adopt conservation, conservation practices, especially in Brazil. Uh, and it's good to say here uh, a little bit about, about uh, Brazil and the uh, agronomic system that, that farmers usually adopt here. Farmers in the, in the center of Brazil uh, usually grow two crops in the, same, in the same year. In the South Brazil also, uh, two crops in the same year. They can grow corn or soy in the summer. After that, they can, they can grow a, a, a wheat or oat or, or a, a winter crop. Uh, and they still have window to grow a cover crop. So it's a very intensive system. So to, 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 to make the system more intensive and more conservative is a, a huge challenge for us. I don't know much from us but uh, i know there you guys do not have uh, a, a tropical climb and as a consequence do not have the same window to grow crops as we as we have and all of the system that i mentioned is is a rain fed system or, or, or it means we do not have uh, irrigation and we can do uh, in almost 100 uh, percent of our, our farmers, we can do uh, two crops in the same years, in the same year. So it's a, it's a huge uh, challenge for us. Uh, after that, we have a, a challenge to measure, report, and verify the carbon in the soil. So how to, to, to ad adopt uh, methodologies, cost, F, uh, cost F, uh, effective, uh, scalable, uh, and, uh, and methodology that can be accepted by, by international markets or uh, international standards. So it's a, it's a huge challenge, especially, especially, especially for, for, for us here that we do not have too much uh, national database or, or, or data set that can support uh, public policy or, or strategies uh, like that. With all of this uh, solved, we still have a, a market challenge. So how to, how to access the carbon, carbon market in, in fact. So uh, carbon market is not our, our priority right now. We, we are focused with this project in helping farmers to be more efficient and to build a very good MRV system. So uh, after that, we have a, a long way to, to develop carbon market in Brazil. Some challenge and with all of that in mind, we, we believe that we should uh, develop a solution that goes further and beyond of carbon. Uh, we understand that, that uh, our strategy should uh, consider, consider uh, sustainable practices, should help farmers to increase their productivity in short term. We should help farmers to mitigate risk, risks with, with uh, sustainable practices. And we also would like to to help them to access an ecosystem of benefits and uh, access some partners that we could bring to the system. And as a consequence of all of that, we could, get, we could help them to access, in fact, carbon market. But carbon market will, will be or should be just a piece of this entire cycle ecosystem that we want to create with this carbon venture. So again, important to say that the agri-sector is already sustainable, especially in Brazil. Uh, I, I already told you guys about our system 
uh, here, the system that we, we adopt here, um, more than 80% of our farmers adopt no-till system. So uh, we know that no-till is a, a very sustainable practice. Uh, and until you guys in US are, are working to, to, to promoting the adoption of no-till, here, we do not have the opportunity to increase, or the opportunity to increase is very low compared to, to, to North America. And our job uh, with this project is also to, to, help, uh, to help farmers to be better recognized across the world. So uh, the grower will be part of this development uh, of this new market that we will for uh, we will for a good business. Uh, with all of, of this in mind, we created this this pro carbono initiative in in the buyer. Uh, we start in twenty twenty one uh, with fifty four clients with 54 clients and next season, we, we got almost 2000 growers enrolled in this program. Uh, we did more than 80,000 of soil samples and laboratory analysis to, to establish the baseline of carbon uh, in these in this fields. We count with several partners to help us to put this project in the ground. And I would like to emphasize one of these pillars, one of these, these, these partners that uh, help us to put it, it, it into the ground is uh, maybe our, our main pillar in this project. Uh, we do not negotiate this pillar. It's, it's about science. Uh, we understand that we need to be based in a very good science, and we invited the most recognized, uh, most uh, important uh, research in the, in the country to help us to define the strategy, how much samples, in which depth, uh, which analysis we should do to, to quantify carbons. Uh, in the end, un understand the carbon dynamics in tropical soils, and they will analyze all the data that we are generating with all of people that we talk about this project. They, are, they, they stay very impressive about the, the power of our database, the database that we are building with this project. So we are studying different methods to measure carbon in the soil, which one have the, the, the better accuracy, uh, which one have uh, lower cost and, and allow us to, to make our program scalable. Uh, we are studying mathematical models to provide scalability to, to this program. We, we are counting, also counting with several research to, uh, to knowledge transfer, to, to, to transfer their knowledge to our people here in Bayer and to to the farmers also. So we are, uh, we are building a very powerful pillar, uh, combining science, know-how, uh, looking to co-create with them, with farmers, and with our people here in Bayer. Here a little bit about the, the flow of, of the project. Uh, we have uh, some uh, prayer requirements for farmers to be part of this project. Farmers uh, need to respect uh, all the laws that we have here in the country. Uh, we do uh, uh, a social and environment assessment of each, farmers, each farmer to be sure that they, they, they respect our laws. And farmers also need to, to, to have our digital tool, climate field view, that we will enable most of our data collection that we need to run this program. Uh, in, the, in the center, we have the, the agronomic practices that farmers should adopt and the practices that we are leveraging, we are leveraging with this, this program. 
uh, we are promoting intensive and conserv conservation uh, intensified and in and conservation practices. Uh, we also are uh, incentivizing, incentivizing some uh, practices that can increase productivity. Uh, we are giving to them soil sample, we are supporting farmers with soil sample, uh, with consultants that can help in them to choose the best practices uh, for each field they, they have enrolled in the system, in the system or in the, in the, the program. In the end of the day, we, what we expect with, with this project is increase productivity, increase sustainability, make connections with, uh, with scientists and who knows about this, this new market, this new topic that is carbon. And as a consequence, we believe our farmers will be ready to be part of a future market of carbon if we have successful in the end to, to create this, this market in Brazil. So which are the practices that we are incentivizing uh, with this program? No-till, cover crop, and crop rotations. No-till means uh, no, no uh, disturbance of the soil. Cover crop means grow a crop that, that is, is no, uh, you, you will not explore commercially. You will, you will let this crop to produce biomass to get the carbon from the atmosphere and put it to, into the ground. Crop rotation means to not uh, grow the same crop every year Year, year after year, it's, it's change, it, it, it talks about change species across the years. So we believe these three agronomic paroxys will pave the road for the future and will make the system be more sustainable in the long term. But we also know that farmers usually have a, a, a look for in, in, the short, in the short term, and we need to uh, leverage some practices that help them to be more efficient in the short term. They, they doesn't know, they, they don't like to, to wait five years to see the, the impact. They want to know the impact in the next season. And uh, we are incentivizing opt optimized use of fertilizer and soil amendments, uh, embrace uh, high performance genetics and biotechnology, uh, use uh, variable rate uh, density of, of plants and do uh, a monitoring based on crop protection. As a result, more, pre more profitability, more productivity, more soil in the carbon, more uh, coverage of the soil with straw, more biodiversity, more soil health. Uh, these are all the impacts that we expect. Going to, to the end, uh, talking about some benefits of this project, uh, of this initiative, uh, different from the project that we have in United States. In United States, I don't know if you already heard about that, but we pay farmers for agronomic practice adoption. Here in Brazil, we do not pay farmers for practice adoption. Uh, in fact, we do not pay farmers until now. We are just inviting them, contributing with them, uh, teaching them, uh, and helping them to be more efficient. Uh, we are not paying them. Uh, it could be uh, a possibility in the future once the market uh, of carbon uh, evolve here, but until now, the benefits that we are offering for farmers is social environment report. It's good for them to know uh, how they are with the laws, uh, with their area. We are providing technical consultant service we are providing soil sampling uh, and we are getting them uh, access to some partners. Uh, for example, they can, can buy 
cover crops for for a small price then can they can buy fertilizers with uh with with some incentive of the of, of our partners so some uh some benefits that we are offering to them is it's it's turned to the the beginning of the story is more than carbon it's, it's an ecosystem that can help farmer to be more efficient to be more sustainable to get more productivity and at the end they can also storage more carbon in the soil with that I close my my presentation here. Oh, sorry, this is, is in Portuguese, but it's basically uh, an ecosystem in which we have a win-win. Farmers win, society wins, investor wins, and the industry also wins. We believe that we can do it together. So thank you very much for the opportunity to be here and share our experience here from Brazil and from uh, Carbon Venture team. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that, Adriano. And um, I'd like to invite Enrique back um, uh, onto the video as well, because I, I know we've got some great questions that have been coming through and um, you know, it was fascinating to see what Bayer has been doing with this carbon project. I think that's so important. Um, but one of the first questions that, that came through that I, I wanted to ask to both of you is, um, and, and certainly Enrique, you know, I think you have a unique experience that you worked on a small, uh, small farm in Wilmington. Uh, and Adriano, I know you mentioned that you were out in Colorado, so you had some experience sort of, of, of the U.S. market when it comes to agriculture. But what do you think is the biggest difference, you know, right now between agriculture in, in the U.S. compared to sort of what you're seeing in Brazil? And I go first here. Yeah, sure, sure, go for it. Please. I'll, I'll open okay. it to either of you to, to jump in. Okay, now, my, my opinion uh, is that the more digital the world becomes, the less the difference between the ecosystems and the technology available and the agriculture itself. So I believe uh, the differences between America, North American agriculture and Brazilian agriculture probably use it to be higher. And I think we are narrowing down these differences due to the technology availability, social media, everything is faster. And the technology comes faster all around the globe. Uh, so I think Brazil really made a, a good job on uh, and has been doing a really good job on trying to become more digital and digital and initi initiatives such as is that Adriano just presented uh, about carbon is, is a good example that we are trying to develop in Brazil and that is already a uh, reality in, in the US. So not talking about the the weather situations and the, the crop uh, environments that they are really different we are talking about tropical agriculture here versus a more tempered agriculture in the us but yeah i think looking at the technology perspective we still have a long way to go but we are getting closer and of course one thing that kind of still Get, get us stuck where we are is our logistics. We do not have as good roads and uh, good railways as US has to uh, 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 load the corn and the soybean and export and so on. So I think we still have a big challenge on this, but yeah, basically on my opinion, this would be the, the, the differences. And I completely agree with uh, with Enrique. Uh, maybe the the technology uh, available is the the biggest gap. It not means that we have we do not have technology. We have a lot, but what I I see is uh, it's more the technology available is more homogeneous there in US. Uh, here, some small farmers can't buy very technological machines, uh, tractor, planter, harvesters, machine, uh, it, and 
uh, it's available mainly for, for big farmers. We have a lot of big farmers uh, uh, here in Brazil. How can I say produtores uh, empresariais? Uh, Entrepreneurs, farmers. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you very much. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's not difficult to find uh, a farmer with uh, 50,000 uh, hectares in, in the Midwest uh, with, with uh, um, their own. And so it's a, a very, it's like a, a, an industry, it's very, very huge. So maybe the, the availability is more homogeneous there. We have a lot of technology applied to, to crops here. As I said, we have two crops. We have a, most of farmers adopting no till most farmers adopt, adopting uh, two crops in the same year. Uh, so we, we are very advanced also, but maybe the technology is it's still a gap. Wonderful, thank you, thank you for that. Yeah, I think certainly technology can be a gap when you're thinking about uh, the field of ag, um, you know, here in the US and, and abroad. One question that, that we've gotten um, in, in terms of your experiences, both in the US, how, how do you think that's helped both of you sort of advance in, in your career? And I guess with that, what sort, of, what sort of advice would you give to someone, you know, if a student who's sitting in here today, or perhaps they're watching the recording down the road, and they want to have an international career in agriculture, what advice would, would you tell them? Like, and well, either Enrique well, or Adriano, you're welcome to, to jump in. Yeah, no, this is a good one. Uh, and I remember, I remember when I was back, back in 2020, uh, 2012, when I was trying to take the decision whether I would go to to the U.S. and in my mind I would probably be losing one year college and lo be behind my colleagues at that time, and that's totally different. So what I could uh, encourage you and advise you take this time, no matter if you're gonna uh, uh, be late one year in your college. That was my case. I just stopped my college by one year, went to America, came back, finished and then started my professional career because as your career goes on, you're gonna see that that one year that you lost in America wasn't lost at all. The opposite, probably uh, it's it gonna make your career uh, go fast, probably compared to the other peers that eventually didn't have the opportunity to, to, to leave this and take this. So don't waste time, go. That's yeah, for sure. I, I, if I can uh, uh, say a, a short, short answer would be uh, uh, having new experience. I believe our, what we are, what our life is, is about the experience that we have. So it's promoting having, getting new experience. I believe helping you will help you to to grow, to to see from another point of view, to to understand how other people can live, can think. So no new people have new experience will will help you to grow yourself. So I believe it's, it's about new experience. Fantastic, thank you both. One a question that came through um, specifically addressed internships, and, and I know um, you know international internships are, are sometimes difficult with with visa regulations and, and, and hiring. Um, but for our students, if they're looking for say a domestic opportunity with with Bear, do those exist? And, and, and if so, I guess you know what advice would you give a student that might be looking to do something domestically with Bear? You mean an American student maybe looking for come to Brazil? Um, or, or, correct, or or looking domestically. I, I know um, in the past in some of our conversations, you know, we've we've talked about some of the complexities that exist with students going to Brazil to to work. Um, but I didn't know if if Bayer had had domestic opportunities as well that perhaps that could lead then to you know uh, an international career, you know, post graduation. Yeah, I think we do have some. Actually, we Bayer and 
in the past Monsanto used to have a, a really strong internship program. And I don't know in the US, but in Brazil, it, it is still very strong. Uh, and basically it was the internship that I took when I came back from the US and finished my college. The last semester in the college is what we call the, the last internship, something, some sort of that. So I took this, this phase of my career in Monsanto and it really helped because it opened the doors to start my professional careers after uh, finishing the, the, the internship. But one important thing, probably the fact that I had just come back from an international experience as internship at the top, probably helped me to get the, the opportunity at the, the Monsanto internship. Yeah, one one interest, interesting thing from my side, Aaron, is I I, I knew my my wife uh, in the company. I merged with with her, and uh, she uh, get in the company from an internship internship program. So, and she, she is still in the company. So we have a, a very strong, as he said, a very strong program for internship here in Brazil. Maybe Renata uh, can, uh, she's in here in the call, can help us to better address this, this, this question. But I believe uh, our program is, is uh, ongoing. We should have two two uh, times during the year to, to, uh, to enroll in this program. And once uh, a student from US have the right permissions to, to stay in the country, I, I, I can say that you will not have problem to, 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 to be a candidate for this program and for sure will be uh, we need to pass through the, the process to be accepted by uh, I believe the most challenging thing is to get the, the visas to, to stay in the country with this with this condition to get uh, like like a job right uh, I remember when I went there I need to take a special visa to to stay in the university to, to stay at a, a student or um, uh, exchange research. I, I don't believe something like that, but I, I took the, the right permission to be to be there, and I believe should be the same for for the guys who wants to to ingress in an internship program here in Brazil. Should be easier in, there in US. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you. Thank you for that. And certainly the Brazil Gateway is a, a fantastic resource that we have as well. Um, and I know the top program, which, which Enrique, you had specifically referenced, that also has outbound um, opportunities. So for those students that are, that are interested, it's not only um, students coming to Ohio State for that exchange, but we also do send students um, abroad. So I would highly recommend um, researching the top program here at Ohio State as well. Um, but I do wanna be respectful of time. I, I know we're coming up in the hour. One last question I, I had actually directly uh, directed to you, Enrique. I think we have some native Ohioans that are in the group. Uh, is there anything that stuck out from your time at Wilmington? Um, any uh, fun cultural activities or, or things that uh, you look back on um, during your time in, uh, in rural Ohio? Well, ever since I, I became a, a Buckeye guy. So <laughs> I, went, <laughs> I went to one game, was a very interesting uh, experience and how the fans uh, the vibration the stadium and how you guys really feel and live football is really interesting to us because we don't have the same football in, in, in Brazil we, we, we love soccer pretty much so b beyond the, the sports I also had the opportunity to go to one Cincinnati Bengals games at the NFL. So it was a really good experience, baseball and all the, these parts. But I pretty much would say that the, the going to the church and look, I'm not the most religious guys in, 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 in the world, but it changed my experience because opened doors to my personal uh, side new in new people, making new friends. Uh, of course, it took my time to 
be closer to to God and uh, it helped me a lot. So if you ever go to such experiences like this while living alone on the other side of the globe and if you feel alone, uh, don't refuse any invitation that people might offer you. Just go, take your opportunity because uh, the, this, these experiences are what really makes your internship or your experience, experience differently, you know? Thank you so much. That, that was a beautiful response. Um, but I, again, I just want to thank you. Thank you both really for your time today, for, for sharing your experiences. Um, you know, we're, we're grateful, our, our students and, um, you know, the OSU community, we're, we're grateful for your time today. So thank you both so much. Um, Caitlin dropped in the link for those um, students that are watching. We'll, we will be having an other, another event um, at the end of the month, very similar, we're, we're, we'll be um, connecting with some agricultural um, companies in, in Brazil. So please um, sign up for that. But again, I, I just want to extend our gratitude and thanks to Enrique, Adriano, Pedro, Jane, Caitlin, thank you for a great event. Um, and again, yes, uh, we'll, we'll end that here. But thank you all so much and enjoy your evenings. Thank you all.